The thirteenth floor. floor. The thirteenth floor. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the thirteenth floor, where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. I am your moderator, B. Jones, and I'm joined by the gang. Mr. Brian Jones, what's happening, bro? I'm good. <laughs> you ain't never seen that much emotion out of him on the podcast. Look at him. You gotta take this in. Man. I'm good. We it's out here living our best life. Beautiful day in Zamunda. Let's go, baby. <laughs> it is. <laughs> DJ Barry, be fresh. What's happening? You know what it is, man. I decided to be here from the beginning and not just drop in on y'all. But, you know, we live. We here. We fresh and baited and big, ready, ready to get it. America was happening. Let's get it. Let's get it. Mike D, what's going on, sir? I'm good. Man. I'm getting me a while. I can't because I'm about to start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Mudley! <laughs> hey, Dace. We got the line in the back. Our best friend. What's going doubt. on? No doubt. What's going on, man? Another beautiful day in paradise, as always. There it is, Mr. Phenomenal. And last but not least, the <laughs> catalyst for all our laughter this evening. <laughs> He's on. What's happening, bro? Life's, life's good. Life's good. Life's well. Just enjoying myself. Having fun. It is, That's, man. That could be is. the blunt of today's, today's, uh, today's enjoyment, so I'm happy for that. Oh, man. I can't PG, wait for right? people to see yeah, it. I just can't wait for the people to see it. <laughs> what is that, number five? Easy. Mm. <clears throat> Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 13th floor, man. We're going to kick this thing off right, man. We're going to start off, uh, we are about a weekend of Black History Month, man, and I want to give a Black History fact, being that we dropping this thing on Friday, February the 8th. Uh, little, well, can't be little known Black History fact, but one of the bigger achievements in history on this day, Oprah Winfrey becomes the first African-American woman to host a national, nationally syndicated talk show, man. So shout out to Oprah being the first African-American woman this day, February 8th, 19, what? 86. <laughs> it was, it's, it's, huh? it's weird to kind of look at the years and you like in your mind, you're like, yeah, that wasn't that long ago. You're like, yeah, that's pretty, uh, 86 is a long time ago. Yeah, but Bro? the sad part is that it took 286 to get there. Right. That's right. Right. But just look at how much, uh, you know, has come since then. Yes. The, the road she's exactly. paid in that time span. Well, since then, up until now, man. You got... Bust that door open. Yeah, wide open, man. For in, so that, many in that industry, yeah. But we still got a long way to go. When we're still talking to industries that today, they're the first black or the first Latino to still do something. And it's 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. There's a long way to go, brother. Yeah. So who's, who's the second? Is there a second? I'm going to leave that up to BJ, man, since he's supposed to be our resident fact checker. Why are you making me work tonight, man? <laughs> no, I just thought about it. Like you said, it's like, if you think about it. Great question. No one remembers number two. <clears throat> but is there a number two? Like, who's the other black number woman? Number two is the first Af loser. I mean, <laughs> you talking about African-American or African-American yeah. woman? African-American woman. Who's the next African-American woman that has any type of syndicated talk show that's on her close. Own. I think Wendy Williams is the only Wendy? one I can think of. No, back then there was, um. oh, my God, what was that chick's name? Oh, my goodness. There were a couple back, like, in that in that Oprah era that, that like, all of a sudden it opened up, like, a whole – Tyra Banks even had a – Latifah um, had one, too. Yeah, Tyra, yeah Latifah, Latifah had one. one there was but a I couple. feel like hers – Tyra like, was like, way like, after that. <clears throat> yeah, Tyra and, and – I want to say it was after. way after, but it was, it it was, was still it was, it was somebody after Oprah. Like we're like I can't even with Oprah. I can't remember there was her a, name, but I could see her face, man. Right, right, right. But going back to um, I don't know who said it, but like I think BJ with the host, the thing of we're still saying, oh, this is the first, you know, uh, African American. This is the first Latina person. Um, it's like, at what point do you look at the positives as opposed to, you know, the, the negatives? Because, you know, like you said, like, this, it's, it took a long time for us to get there, right? But so should we focus on the fact that it took a long time to get there? Or should we focus on the fact that, hey, we're here, we're moving forward? Or is it kind of like a, we got we to gotta look at both of them. There, there's, no, there's no separation. Am I making sense? Yeah, I think it's low. it depends on what it is in terms of whether it shouldn't be that hard for that first to have happened. So it's amazing that it did take us this long to get there right. versus something that, I don't know, I guess like the first to make an electric car 
is different than saying the first black to ever reach a billion dollars in net wealth. Like those two things seem as though that should have happened already. But if it hasn't, then it's kind of wondering, okay, well, why not? Why is this just the first? Considering we're in 2019, and you can kind of go back and look and see through when other cultures, races, however you want to define it, when they got to that level compared to us. Yeah, you got to think about it, man. We're talking about 20 years, 20 to 30 years removed from civil rights movement, right? Um, so it's not that fe- it's not that feasible and then we talking about what should be a civil liberty you know what i'm saying we should have that freedom that opportunity should have been um afforded us just on the backbone of what america is supposed to have been built upon so i can see it you, you know definitely seeing looking at it from that angle as well wow dang it took us this long but you you know you can't live in that glass half empty full mentality right you know we got to celebrate our successes and then you know look at how we can continue to push that needle forward definitely and it was Rolanda Rolanda um Watts I believe was um the lady the other talk show host Rolanda just found it you're right 94 but Whoopi Goldberg they had one in 92 to 96 they said I forgot about that one yep Mm. that's interesting because Whoopi Goldberg came to mind when we were talking when I brought it up um, and we talk about how moving forward the industry, you know, the television and entertainment, I guess, industry. And I read something, I think it, it might have been like last week, our good friend Monique had um, kind of thrown Whoopi Goldberg under the bus um, in some interview. And she had actually mentioned, um, and I, it, it, I, I don't know if she, it was just her, you know, when she gets excited and passionate about what she's trying to do as far as pushing the agenda forward with black people, women in the entertainment industry. Um, but she, she had made a comment along the lines of, you know, what had Whoopi Goldberg executive produced. And so I, it, it, I made me go back and do that research as to what she had done. And she had done quite a, quite a few things. Oh yeah. Whoopi's, Whoopi's, she's, 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 yeah, she's on the low. I don't need the, the, Exactly. Many, many car lines in Brooklyn because of Whoopi. Like a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you know, this is a um, this Whoopi's is a staple. Color purple. Right. There's staple. some people that you, you don't you don't mention or talk about or or, or disrespect. Whoopi's one of the ones you just literally don't because her backing and support Yo, is. She, is she's strong. been here so long, bro. Yeah. Look, like, look back in the comedy that was the comedy that comedy tour comedy relief she did with. Robin Williams and Billy yep. Crystal back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like every single year, them three. Like, mm-hmm. that was unheard of for a black, let alone a black female comedian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She and liked the Simon for Davis a long time. I don't know. I actually think it still might go on. Comic Relief, I think is what it was called. Yep. Let me see. Yeah, it does. It still goes was on. it Farm Aid or USA Aid? One of them. Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And those, that, that used to be funny as hell, man. George Carlin. Robin. Uh, Williams, Billy Crystal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then she had her stand up. Mm-hmm. It was her, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor. Oh, she, yeah, don't get it wrong. She, she was a, she was a goat back then. <coughs> she was one of the originals. Like she's, mm-hmm. being, yeah, she holds, she holds stronghold, stronghold on those things. And and she, she should re- recognize at some point in time for all she's done and some kind of Hall of Fame or something because she's. Um, she's opened that 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 barrier many 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 ways, and, and even now even now on the on the talk she that she's on now the show like she's still like she's an icon on that show and like when she speaks everyone like mm-hmm. quiet and when it is a little a little bad or something's going on back and forth like at the end of the day Whoopi says the last word because I'm Whoopi <laughs> like that's it so it's pretty cool. And you got to respect it, right? You do. But sticking with the Black History Month topic, man, I want to get you guys taken. I'm going to just open the floor up, uh, open it up to the floor. How you feel how relevant Black History Month is in this day and age? Um, I feel like, and it might just be due to my disconnection from the rest of the world, being that I work a lot. I'm not on social media too much. I don't watch a whole lot of TV. So I don't see, you know, what is actually being highlighted. But last night I did catch... um, a little bit of the Super Bowl. I was in and out because I was still doing work as it was on. Um, and it seemed like, and I guess I'm going to go to you guys to see what you think, um, that there was a lot more focus 
on some black history aspects within the commercials than I had seen in previous years. So not even just the commercials of black history month, what do you guys feel that we fall on the spectrum at this day and age? It wasn't just the commercials. Um, I had actually turned on before the game and they had a Mm -hmm. very in-depth, like a piece about Atlanta and, you know, the whole movement. And it was a, a lot going on. I definitely think that, you, you know, my, my, it's a double edged sword. That's my favorite, you know, my favorite saying six eggs in one hand, half a dozen in the other, where the importance, of course, is always still strong, but the whole year is about black history. And, <laughs> and, and so it's exactly. always one of those, one of those um, moments where it's, you can A, pick at why is the shortest month and why is, you know, this and why are we only supposed Not to be even discussing it? Yeah, that, but at the same time, it's at least, there is um, the ability to recognize, but I guess it shouldn't be um, decided to be so catered in, in, in only a month, right? This would be celebrated just period, as opposed to feeling in a sense like it is um, confined almost to this month, even though I think that over time we have seen a better presentation and a better um, execution of being able to show, you know, what we have done what the importance of it, but that, you know, we are still on that, that course. It's still, it's still a a moving pieces. It's not that, you know, just because we're not slaves, quote unquote, anymore, it doesn't mean that, you know, the, the revolution is stopped. I think that'll happen with the whole being, let it be celebrated throughout the year is when it's, it's like looked at as American history. I feel like it's when it's like titled black history, it just, it does Great seem confined. Yeah, it creates the separation. And it's like we put in like, okay, this is just this is what you got over here, but America Pie is over here. It's like it's all everything was built, you know, you know what I mean, on the backs of it. So I feel like when you look at it as as one as opposed to that separation, not that you can't uh we are different, you know what I mean? I feel like the ideal situation is when we all bring our cultures to the table, we can all eat from it, you know, collectively. But um, you know, all of ultimately a black history is American history and vice versa. You know, you can't have one without the other as far as in the African-American culture, you know. So this I mean, is one of those. Go ahead, Art. No, I was saying that it just, I think now in our current time, we're seeing more of, oh, I didn't know that someone black did that. Um, a lot more that, hey, you know, that this, was, this was invented by this or this was patented by this person. Like that's coming out a lot more now. And a lot of those things are, are being, being brought to their forefront where, you know, before it was, it's the big, the big, you know, the big 10 characters, the big, you know, the civil rights movement, the slavery process. But now it's like everyday stuff is coming forward to the light. Like, oh yeah, let's celebrate like the first CEO of this big five, five, four, five, four, five, four, company that's coming in here and making things happen or let's celebrate this. So it's not just about, you know, what happened in the 60s and the 50s and, and way back when. It's now like, hey, like history is showing you what's happening now to help people who are younger say, Oh, this is like now it's relevant to me. I'm seeing this in the '80s and the '90s, and that kind of stuff's happening. Hence, Oprah today. Like we talk about that now. Like somebody younger is going to know that this was. Oh, I was five years old when that happened. Versus like, oh, I wasn't born when this was happening way back then. Like you're seeing your relevance now and how it's being portrayed to younger generations. This is also one of the arguments that I I kind of get into yearly with different people. Like my stance on it because Black History Month is really should be the time you're teaching others. So the other 11 months is time for you to learn about everything that's going on. Sorry about that. Learn about everything that's going on and do your, st- do your history, do your research, do the, the understanding to build yourself up. And then the specific during Black, from February 1st to 28th should be when you're teaching and educating others about the thing. It shouldn't be only this month that we set aside to learn about. And I know it's not only anymore, but a lot of times when you talk about school, you talk about on the focus, it should be interwoven into all the learning process of, we're talking about uh, US history, which encompasses everybody and everything, every event that happened. Mm -hmm. These people happen to be either black individuals or their contributions to that history. Now in February, we're just highlighting that. It's just go back, draw the comparison, and it's not a fair comparison, but it's the best thing I can think of. It's not like, October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's not like breast cancer only happens in October. Hmm. 
it's the mm-hmm. it's the month that everybody focuses on awareness, um, diagnosis, and and different things out there to get people aware of what's going on the signs of. It. So they there's a hyper focus during the month to educate, but the rest of the year people are dealing with learning about and living their life through that process and families are growing through it. So once we change our mindset about, well, kids coming home with Black History projects that are due on the last day of the month, right? Well, those projects and research have been done throughout the year. Now we, we're just highlighting everything that's going on throughout this month or doing community events and, and doing all these other things. Mm-hmm. So when we get into that mindset and shift, because I, I remember thinking back to when we were in school, I can speak for myself at least, that it really was maybe the end of January through February 28th, who was the hyper focus. <laughs> you really didn't touch it that much anymore. Mm-hmm. We got to get out of that mentality and look like look at the big picture. And this this slice of the pie is just to educate, really have a sensitive, um, excuse me, that hypersensitive focus on educating others about the contribution and everything. So learn it 365, but teach it hyper focus 28 days. Mm. So, a yeah, question it goes along that same educate, uh, educator route or education route. Um, so do you see a difference in how they teach black history within the schools? Like, do you see that integration? Because, um, you know, even with my, my daughter's school, even like last year, we got to be creative about, because it's always a black history month project, right? And everybody wants to do stuff on Martin Luther King or maybe mm-hmm. Benjamin Manica, since we're up here in DC. Um, mm-hmm. We got to be creative about who we, you know, want to do our project on so that she's actually learning something other than the mainstream. Correct. Mm-hmm. I don't know if schools are jumping on that and expanding the knowledge that they're providing to their students, which would, you know, segue into the communities and the like. I think you even got to look at the mainstream. So Michael was talking today about Muhammad Ali and then he was told that his original name, which was Cassius Clay, he changed it to Muhammad Ali to avoid going into the war. So you kind of like, wait, hold what? Um, it's the way the history is interpreted to give you a little bit, but I'm not giving you a hundred percent of everything because I'm not completely educated on what all went into it. And it's uncomfortable for me to talk about everything in terms of why things happen. So I'm going to mm-hmm. go back into my comfort zone and give you a piece of the information. And if you really don't have a parent that's conscious, that's talking to you about that to begin with, you wouldn't even know to get to a point where you're talking about the unknowns. So you got to make sure that you get them to understand, all right, this is the real reason why he changed his name and what all went into the history before I can even get you to start talking about the next, the uh, under, like it's a whole lot that's got to be done first. Hold on. Uh, it's really, again, what, what school you're in, what teacher you have that is on a project. If the teachers understand that um, it's not about those traditional every year highlighted folks, individual folks and other contributors. Again, I had to push my kids last year when they did theirs. I believe it was last year. We've done so many over the years. I can't remember which year it was. Um, that, okay, tell me what are you interested in? And let's look up like the origins in the first black in that one. So my son was, um, and he's going through this football stage. So we're, we're working with him about learning more about this sport in general. So if I, if I say the name Kenny Washington, how many of you guys know who I'm talking about? Okay, no so Kenny Washington, it was actually the first player, um, in the, black player in the NFL, played for the UCLA Bruins, um, he actually, and I'm doing the research with him because this was like enlightening to me. So he was actually the first player to be drafted in the NFL when it, players couldn't come um, because of the strike. Um, there was a strike by the players' union, um, and until the owners conceded to let blacks play, there was a, a huge um, uproar about that. So the Rams were actually the first they were in in California years ago. The first like 19 19- 20s i can't remember the year exact year right now um but until they had to add a black player to the roster in order to get public funding so until they did that they were they were going to lose their funding the stadium everything was going to fall by the wayside that's the only reason they added him at first but the made it matter of fact was he went to school with jackie robinson uh him and jackie robinson went to school together 
Jackie Robinson ended up playing baseball. In fact, he was a better baseball player than Jackie Robinson. Just went the football route. Interesting. Jackie yeah. Robinson went to play baseball. He went to the NFL. <clears throat> there was a couple wow. other guys for the team. Like, this was all new to me. I had never heard it before. But it was his interest, what he wanted to do. And that's why we dug deeper into it. That's awesome. Cool. That's cool. Always but how many awesome. people out there are pushing kids to, to think past? And again, it's not wrong. You need to know about the Rosa Parks, the Martin Luther King, the Barack Obamas, the other world, because those are at the forefront. And kids really need to still know about them and know, dig deeper on their own. But there are many, many others out there that we've never heard about. Like Kenny Washington was the one that I had never heard about, but I can think of to this day and still remember that and pass that on. To mm. That's gotcha. deep. Gotcha. That's real deep. So with the Black History Month, what do you guys feel? <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna put it out, I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot now, cause I wanna get you guys is like, I guess biggest thing in Black History, like your, I guess, um, not necessarily maybe go-to fact, but something that you pride yourself in much more than anything else. I will, I, what? <laughs> I'm about to say what I think is like one of the biggest uh, Black history moments, I guess, is really President Obama. I think that the the strength of, of seeing um, a Black person hold that position really and not just for young, but for old people too, just gave that like cut in the, um, we never thought that when we were young, like we would say it, but we never really thought that it was possible. And so really seeing it, like, I think for everybody, all generations, it was very eye opening and um, powerful moment that, that really gave the breath to anything is possible. Like for real, for real, anything's possible. Yeah, I think trying to see kind of what the whole marketing vibe is going to be and try and do something different than that, specifically since the kids have been born, is to really try, I think, short of what BJ said, but instead of looking at it like I've looked at it as a time, all right, well, we definitely going to make sure that we highlight something often. We talk about it around the house. Um just to kind of see where you guys are at, almost like a check-in on your blackness, so to speak. Um, just to see literally, all right, well, how much do you know? Do you know who this person is? Whatever first I can think of in terms of trying to bring it up, um, usually it ends up falling back to hip-hop or some type of music or some type of movie or something mainstream, asking them just things from just my experience and my perspective. Um from there and then other than that not too much like I don't have any history facts that can just roll off the tongue about black folks I don't know for me it's something similar it's not necessarily a fact but finding something that I can give my daughter to take into the classroom um, because I think at her school she can and with the family background um, strong spiritual family um, very knowledgeable of ethnic roots. So it's always finding stuff like whether it be with the Moors or um, from Ethiopia and our original roots, something that she can kind of latch on to. So um, the most recent thing was like Egyptian pharaohs and kings. She kind of, uh, and, and queens, I guess, but the queens could be pharaohs too. She really like got into that culture. So we did a whole like historical essay on those things. And that was stuff that didn't highlight in the month, but she could take the school with her and share that with the with the rest of the class and the students and hopefully educate them about some things. For me, is I think it's been a personal reflection on little things that even like family members have done, like behind this behind the scenes or were part of that don't get that mention. So when I think back to my grandfather, my mother's father, um his his role in the Black Battalion of the Army when World War Two on D Day. Right. And he was part of the second wave that came in on D-Day. And their their initial job, um, they were supply battalion. They weren't originally the fighters or that just because of the way the army structure was set up. But then all in all, their job turned into cleaning up the dead bodies of everybody that was left there from the first wave. Right. Then they come back home and then and goes back to the business start we had last year. They opened up their business as the only black funeral home in their small town in Steubenville, Ohio. Um, and 
operated for many, many years on the thing. Like little things like that, that were a part of our own family, but still a part of that local history and, and actual national history that people never talk about, right? So trying to find those things and find things on my father's side as well. And then on Gina and her, her family side, and from, coming from Jamaica, the other side coming from Haiti and different, and talking about actually, I, I joke around with Gina all the time, like, what are you doing? Jamaican or you Haitian, right? But it's just it's just a joke between us. But when the, the kids really don't understand that part, so when we talk about um, Haitian Independence Day, and then we talk about Haitian Flag Day, on there, like that's a part of your culture too. So you need to understand why that's going on. And what, so when it comes down to Haitian Flag Day in Miami, when they were younger, we were right there. I took them down and like experience and feel like what's it about. I, I can't give you the history because I'm learning it myself. But I want you to see this is a part of you as a whole. And this is still a part of this country, too, as well. So to find those personal connections and making sure they understand that that history is their history as well. Yeah, I don't have a um, necessarily a fact either. I would say more so uh, just like what's something that really resonates with me is just the whole concept of slavery uh, and just the resiliency of us as a people um, that I feel like that really we can we can pull from that, you know. What I mean, even in today's society, like just the thought of like that that uh, the Black History Museum in DC, mm-hmm. going through that, like that was an eye opener for me. And um, just seeing the fact that like uh, you know uh, women they would come in from being in the fields all day, whatever have you, they would come still come home and put food on the table for their kids, or they they would have like have like gardens in the back of the of the huts or whatever that they were growing just to make sure that their kids still had herbs and spices for the food and it would t- taste good. I'm like, bro, you still had energy to do those things after whatever the day held, you know what I mean? And then you look at, uh, I look at my mom and she did stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, it's just like, so for me, like that, that resiliency and that, that, that grit and that desire said, I'm not going to settle. Um, that really speaks to me in so many ways. So, uh, I, I love the fact that I have that their blood running in me. Mine's is just I'm learning. I mean, learning every day. I think I took the challenge for myself to promote uh, all year long, 365, um, some black history moments and what's happening. So by me doing that, if you're following me on Instagram, that's where you're seeing like my daily posts of just stuff that I didn't know. Um, so like I make it a mission to go out there and just share it. And I think it's cool when then, um, people who I had no idea was following me or was looking, they like, told me, hey, I look forward to your your post and your mm-hmm. teaching. And it's cool. And it's not just pe- not people who are, are black. Uh, this is, I mean, all kinds of races. They're just like, oh, that was pretty cool. So for me, it's just, you know, sharing what I'm learning every single day. Um, and then hopefully I can share that information with the boys as they, as they learn their Nigerian culture and their American culture um, so they can see that they're they are not just second class people. They actually are a part of American history. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it says today in American history and today in black history, because it's both. I look forward to it too, man. At New Plus, 2K. Like, a couple of gems, I'm like, I had to read a couple of them like, like for real? I didn't know that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, I mean, that's amazing. And I think it's like Jay said, man, black history is American history. And it's great that you're able to reach those that are not in of African American descent and they can take something from that, man. That's huge. I think the other thing that goes along with that is for us to realize that we are living history. We're making history each and every day. So you got to attack each and every day in that manner, man. Know that what you're doing right now can be or will be written in the history books of your life in the future. Um, so yeah, man, we're going to close that section of the podcast out like that. Phase on, I'm going to come to you, then J Dace and Fresh to get the, uh, fresh and biz this week, and then we're gonna wrap this thing on up. So, Faison, what you got for us this week in the corner? Well, first, you need to turn your mic on. Yes, I'm back off mute. All right, I was giving <laughs> some time to uh, give some time to allow, um, you know, use this some edits, anyhow. Um, so today is gonna be just about the process of determination. So, I'll tell you a quick little story, um, and then we'll move on. So, three birds were sitting on a fence, two birds decide to leave. How many birds still in that fence? Most people will say one bird's left, but two of them decide to leave. So all three of them are still sitting there deciding. You got to make a decision. If you're going to make a, make a decision to move, take that action. You can decide all you want, but until the action takes place where you actually leave the fence, 
you are still sitting there thinking about what you're doing. So wherever you are in life right now, if you're thinking about making the move and you've been thinking about it for all this time, jump, fly, get away, make the mistake, but don't decide to do it and not make any action behind it. There it is. Preach. Like first said last week, don't forget them details. <laughs> Big facts. Big facts. Preach. Jay Dace, man, what you got for us, man? Fit tip this week. Oh, man. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think a lot of people get caught up on, uh, you know, knowing what to do, like what workout should I do, what 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 uh, should I be eating. But I think that the, the big thing that people are not grasping is that it's really a mindset. So really what you should be focused on uh, on is – what you already know, not so much what you don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you know that soda every weekend is not necessarily taking you to your, your uh, health and wellness goals, right? You know that party and drinking, you know that that donut that you have every night isn't taking you there. So more so what you do know is what's going to get you to where you're just trying to go. So I, I would say apply, like like Faison said, apply the knowledge. It's not, it's not so much the knowledge that's going to get you there, but it's the application of it. So I would say apply what you do know. And uh, ride that wave. Easy, easy. Fresh. Who hit the shot? All right, preach on. Oh, 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 I'm on. Um, well, 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 fresh and biz. Thanks for my intro. Um, (laughs) I was boo you the shot and at the same time. Um, Fresh and biz this week, man. Fresh, what you got for the people? Um, this week, you know, it is it is not a fact. It is a challenge. We are in Black History Month, so I challenge you all to buy Black in Black History Month. Um, I didn't get a chance to participate in the conversation last week uh, regarding Killer Mike. However, I know in the show he did make the challenge of trying to buy Black for a whole, I believe it was like three days or something like that, and it was extremely hard. But I think that just the challenge of trying to buy some Black toothpaste, buy Black deodorant or um, Black detergent, Try and find, I think, uh, buyblack.com or webuyblack.com will provide a bunch of different uh, Black-owned businesses for any category or item that you might be looking for. But like I said, this month or week or day or whatever, this Fresh and Biz is about the challenge of buying Black. Go ahead and buy Black for Black History Month, even though you should do it year-round. So I'm kind of being a hypocrite about the way I talked earlier, but all the same, challenge accepted. Let's go, America. We out here. Fresh and biz, number one entrepreneur ninja. I'm super cool. interested in seeing this uh, that cell phone, man. I really want to I want to get that joint just to see. You know what? Phone. You're right. I'm very, yeah, we need to um, Who, who's um, we need to find out. Yeah, we need to find out about that. We need to that find anyway. out how much it is. We could just, it was figures. Or something. Was it figures? Figures, yeah, F I. Yeah. I think it's figures. F I G G E R S. Yes, that's yes. We need to um. What? We All right, that yep. as a group, man. Make that the 13th floor cell phone, man. See what I'm down with that. There it is. The trap phone. 13th floor <laughs> trap phone. <laughs> Go ahead, Art, before I get us up out of here. Yeah, I just want to say that today's episode is brought to you by um, Compro Tax Cleveland. Uh, if you want to get your taxes filed, we uh, hey. they do individual, small business, corporations, and nonprofit uh, free filing and direct deposit. Um, if you want to contact them today, it is uh, comprofinancial at gmail.com. That is C-O-M-P-R-O-F-I-N-A-N-C-I-A-L at gmail.com. Or you can reach them at 216-282-4873. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Get your taxes done. Compro Financial, man. Go see about them uh, in Cleveland. Uh, you remember you can get this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, the videos on Vimeo and YouTube. Each and every week we drop in the gyms for, to get you through your week and everything. So, um, yeah, follow us at 13th Floor, please, on all your social media platforms. We out, chill. We out of here, baby. Thank you for listening here on the 13th Floor where the furniture isn't always the best. But the views are amazing. 103. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. The 13th floor. floor. The 13th floor. floor.